for you to understand the magnitude, in order for you to understand the sanctity and the seriousness of giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for such a noble project, I feel compelled to share with you the story of Tufail bin Amr. Tufail bin Amr, for those of you who don't know him, was from Yemen. And he was the chief of his people, Dawus. And he was very famous, he was also extremely influential and educated. He was a poet at his time. In fact, he was a master poet. He would compete nationally and internationally. And he would often at times come out on top. And therefore, back then, those who would win the poetry contest would have their poetry, Ash'ar, carved on top on, around the Kaaba. So today you have a cloth that covers the Kaaba. Back then, they would decorate the Kaaba with poetry. And Tufail bin Amr al Dawsi, his poetry would often at times uh, be decorated around the Kaaba. And this made him very close and dear to the people of Quraysh. Now, during the infancy of Islam, during the early years of Islam, when our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started to call the people to tawheed the oneness of Allah, during the first year, Tufail bin Amr al dawus was scheduled to come to Mecca. So the people of the Quraysh, they said, if Tufail bin Amr al dawus comes to Mecca and encounters Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he may become a Muslim because the Prophet وسلم, is calling the people to Tawheed, reciting to them verses from the Quran which he claims to be divine. And the job description or the profession of Tufil bin Ham is that he is a poet. And Arabic is his, uh, you know, um, stronghold. So immediately if he encounters the Prophet وسلم, he will realize that what the Prophet is sharing with the people is not man-made. Anyway, so they met with Tufail bin Amr at those on the outskirts of Mecca. I know there's a little commotion. Is people focus on trauma? Good. Tufail bin Amr at those was met on the outskirts of Mecca by the chiefs of the Quraysh. And they said to him, Tufail, there is a majnoon among us. A Sadiq al Amin became Majnoon. They said to him, There is a Majnoon among us. He is reciting poetry to people, and this is having a magic impact and effect upon the people. He's separating the people from their loved ones. The parents are separated from their children, the children are separated from the parents, the husband and wives are becoming separated because of what he's reciting unto them. So we warn you, when you come to Mecca for the international poetry contest, do not go close to this man. If you hear of him, Muhammad, do not go close to him. So he said, okay. When he came to Mecca, he put in his ears cotton wool. And one day he was making circumambulation tawaf around the Kaaba, and guess who was there? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Prophet of Allah was reciting Quran. And even though he had cotton wool in his ear and he couldn't hear anyone, it was the will of Allah that he was able to hear the recitation of the Quran. And when he heard the Quran, he said, this is not the speech of mankind. This is the speech of something divine. So he followed our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his home. And he questioned him and the Prophet of Allah immediately gave him da'wah and he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Takriya! So now brothers and sisters, three days later he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to go back to Yemen. I am influential if I give da'wah to my people, they will all become Muslim. If my people become Muslim, then Islam will have some strength and merit. So the Prophet of Allah said, this is a good idea, go home and give da'wah to your people. Now understand, when he came to Mecca, he was on foot. He was a poor man. He traveled 1,000 miles from Yemen to Mecca. Now he's traveling 1,000 miles back to Yemen on foot. So he comes to back to Yemen and he meets his father. And he said, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. Me and you are not the same anymore. He said, why, what happened to you, my son? He says, I met Muhammad and I have become a Muslim. So I am of 
the religion of monotheism. I no longer worship idols. His father said, Dini Dino. Beta, my son, if you have become a Muslim, I have also become a Muslim. So then he met his wife a few moments later and he, she came to hug him. He said, no, 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 no. Me and you are no longer husband and wife. Obviously, this is not the best way of that work, but he had only been Muslim for a couple of days. She said, what is the matter with you and your wife? Why don't you embrace me? He said, I become a Muslim. You are of the religion of those who worship idols. I worship the one Allah and Muhammad is his final messenger. She says, my husband, I trust you. Dini Dinuk, I am your, of your religion. So now the next day he goes and he gathers hundreds and thousands of people. Listen and listen carefully, brothers and sisters. He gathers hundreds and thousands of people in the courtyard and he says, I call you to the oneness of Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is the last and final prophet of Allah. The people took off their shoe and they chased him away. They rebuked him, they reprimanded him, they said, Papa, are you stupid? What happened to you? You are abandoned the religion of our forefathers, we will never become Muslim. So he became sad and he became angry. And he had no way to go, so he packed the bag and he walked 1,000 miles back from Yemen to Makkah. You know how long this is? This is like going from Maine to California and back on foot. Dedication. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I have come back to see you and to inform you that my people rejected the call of Tawheed and they have engaged themselves in sin. Make dua that Allah destroys them. So the Prophet of Allah said, okay. He raised his hands to the heavens and all of the Sahaba of the Allah they said, Halaqadaus, if the Prophet makes his dua, Allah will destroy the people of those. But to everyone's amazement and surprise, the Prophet of Allah said, Ya Allah, guide the people of those, give them hidayah. Turn their hearts towards Allah. Then, subhanAllah, after two months of staying with the Prophet the faith was commanded, Go back to Yemen and call the people to Allah with hikmah, with wisdom and beautiful teachings. So Tufail went back. Now many years passed by. The Muslims fought in the, they migrated from Mecca to Medina. They fought in Badr, in, 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 in Uhud. They fought in, in uh, Khanak. Khanak came after. Then Khaybar. At Khaybar, when the Muslims needed help, to fail bin Am at those with about 80 families embarked on a journey to help the Muslims from Yemen to Medina. 80 families consisting of 700 people. All of these people now, I beg, I beg for your undivided attention, focus on what happens next. All of these 700 people became Muslim at the hands of who? To fail bin Am at those. That means all the good deeds that these people would perform, the reward of all of the nobility that they will conduct, the gentleness that they will exhibit, the generosity that they will display, all of this tawab, this reward will go to who? To fail bin Amr al But do you know something that after a few years of coming to Medina, to fail bin Amr al passed away? But you know, you may have never heard of the story of to fail bin Amr al correct? But there is a man from among these 700 people that you and I know till this day. There is no doubt, there is no doubt that you don't know this individual. Till this day and until the day of judgment, they will know this man. He was among the 700 people. His birth name was Abd shams He was later named by the Prophet Abdul Rahman. But to you and I, he's best known by his nickname, Abu Huraira. <laughs> There was Abu Huraira, a young man. Tufail bin Amr al Dawus passes away, but Abu Huraira becomes the king of Hadith, the master of Hadith, narrating over 6,000 Hadith. Today, there isn't a single book of Islam that is not without the Hadith of Abu Huraira. Every time, understand this, my brother and sister, you and I read and recite a Hadith, learn and memorize a Hadith, teach a Hadith to somebody else, or is guided to Islam through the teachings of Abu Huraira. All of that tawah, it goes to Abu Huraira, it goes to Tafir bin Amr al Dawus, and it goes to Abu Sulaiman. So imagine, my brother and sister, how much reward 
Tufail bin Amr al-Dawus is acquiring. Allah.